Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at rooting our Pixel phones on Android 11 and we're going to do this right from the beginning. We're going to start with unlocking the bootloader and then pretty much installing Magisk onto it. I figured out it might be best to actually see if your device is able to be rooted because some of them cannot be due to them being unable to unlock the bootloader. So a quick way to check is actually you go to settings and then you go to about phone and then you enable the developer options by tapping the build number seven times. You'll need to enter your pin button or passcode and go back one more, go back to system, head down to advanced and then tap on developer options. And if you see here, we have an option for OEM unlocking. If you cannot enable this, it's disabled or it says, you know, please contact your carrier or something along the lines of that. Unfortunately, you are unable to root your device. Some carriers do lock their bootloaders permanently, such as uh, phones purchased from Verizon. And also other carriers may require you to pay off your phone before they allow you to unlock the bootloader. So you might have to contact them to see more details, but as long as you can enable OEM unlocking, you should be fine. All right, so while we're here, why don't we enable OEM unlocking as well? You need to enter in your pattern and then tap on enable. And this is pretty much the only thing you need to do on your device. So let's head back to our computer because we actually need to download a few things before we can actually do everything else. And the first thing is we need to grab the latest version of the Google USB drivers. Now this is only applicable for Windows. You can click on this link here and then you'll need to read and agree to the terms and conditions and then download the drivers. Now I'm going to download everything into one folder, just into an Android folder, um, just so we can keep things organized. But after you've downloaded the Google USB drivers, why don't we download the SDK platform tools. Now this package contains programs like ADB and Fastboot that we need to use in order to communicate with our phone from our computer. So again, I'm running Windows here, so I'm going to click on the one for Windows. I'm going to agree with the terms and conditions and I'm going to download it. Great. I'm also going to save this in the same folder. And we also need to download a factory image for our device. Now inside the factory image, we can use this file called the boot image and we can use Magisk Manager to install Magisk onto it. So we don't need a custom recovery and that is how we're going to be rooting our phone today. So you need to download the one that is right for your device and it has to match the version of Android you're running right now. So I'll show you a way to kind of check what version you're currently running on your phone and how to make sure you download the right version. So head on back to your phone here and let's go back out until we hit up the uh, main menu, the main settings screen. Go back to about phone and then tap on Android version. You should see these two values here, the Android security update, mine is October 5th. And we also have the build number here. Now in the build number, you can actually tell here, this is the date that's in the middle. So it's year 20, month is 10, and the day is five. So that's the 5th of October for 2020. So for example, I'm running here the Pixel 3, so I'm going to go down to, uh, well, head over to our computer, and we'll go down to Pixel 3 on the right-hand side. And then you can see all the factory images that have been released for this phone. You can actually see the dates here on the left-hand side on the end of the build number. So this is the build number. I need to find one that is in October 2020. So I need to scroll down towards the bottom. And here, I also have the build number. So all you have to do is double check that this uh, this highlighted thing right here matches whatever is down here. And if it does, then we're good to go. So I'm going to download this one and uh, click on the link button here and download the factory image into the same folder. And I guess last but not least, this is something that we'll download on our phone, but we'll do this later since this is an app that's installed on our phone. And when we unlock the bootloader, it'll actually wipe our device. So we will download this later directly on our phone. So don't worry about this right now. So you should have these three files on our computer downloaded. So why don't we start off by installing the USB drivers just in case our computer needs it. If your computer is connected to the internet and has Windows Update enabled, it should automatically get a driver for you. It won't be the Google USB drivers, but it will be a set of drivers that do work with our phone, which is all right. But just in case, why don't we open up the zip file here and extract the USB driver folder outside, just like so. And once that is done, you can close that zip file. And we need to open up the USB driver folder. And in here, there's a Android underscore winusb.inf file. I want you to right click on that and then click on, oops, I've got to click on it. Right click on it and then click on install. You might get this uh, pop up here asking if you'd like to install this device software. Uh, make sure always trust is enabled and then click on install and you'll get a message saying that the operation has completed successfully and that's great. So we can click OK and we're done installing the drivers. 
Next up, we need to open up the platform tools folder, uh, sorry, zip file. So let's open that up and we need to extract the platform tools folder outside. So again, this just contains the programs that we need to run in order to communicate with our phone. So ADB and Fastboot primarily. All right, we can close the zip file once we're done here. And now let's open this up and we need to open up a command prompt window inside the same directory so we can run these programs. And a quick way of doing that is actually going up to the address bar here and typing in CMD and then hitting enter. This will open up a command prompt window that already has its current directory changed to the platform tools. So if I list out the contents of this directory, you can see we have access to ADB and also fastboot, which is over here. And if we end up typing in fastboot, say a fastboot version, we can see that this is the location of it and we can run fastboot. And if we run ADB, we can also see that that works as well. So have this open on the side and organize these windows into a side-by-side -side view. This will help us out when we start flashing things. Once you've done that, you can go back into the Android folder where everything else is. And the last thing we need to open up is the factory image. So let's open that zip file up. And inside there's a blue line folder or whatever the code name is for your pixel. There'll be a folder inside. Double click on that. And we need to open up the image zip file here. So double click on that and that'll extract it and open up the image zip file. And we need to locate a file called the boot.img file. And we need to extract that into our Android folder, just where everything else is. And there we go. We can close the image zip file. We can actually now unlock the bootloader since we have everything ready. Now keep in mind, unlocking the bootloader will actually wipe everything from your device. So it is very important that you back up everything that you need. Things like your photos or videos, uh, all of them will be gone after we unlock the bootloader. So why don't we go ahead and do that once you've backed up everything. We need to head over to our phone and we need to boot our phone into the bootloader first. So let's hold the power button and I'm going to tap on restart. And when we do so, when the screen turns black or when it freezes, I want you to hold the volume down button. The sequence to get in is actually power and volume down from when your device is turned off. But since our phone is restarting, if I just hold the volume down button, we should get into the bootloader quite easily. Right. So you can see we're here. Now, why don't we check that our device is connected to our computer properly? So we can do that by typing in fastboot devices, hit enter, and you should see your device's serial number pop up and also the mode fastboot. If you have any problems with this step, you should right-click on your start button and then select device manager. From here, you should be able to see if your device has come up as an unknown device or something with a little orange exclamation mark next to it. From there, uh, Actually, Windows should automatically take care of it because we've installed the Google USB drivers. For whatever reason, it's not. For example, this is the device that we need. You need to right click on it, click on update driver, and then browse my computer for drivers. And then browse to that location where we have the USB driver folder in our Android folder. Okay, so just as an example, you'd browse to the Android folder, and then you click on USB driver, and then you would click OK. And then from here, it'll actually try to install the driver for you. But I've already got the driver set up, so that's why it says that they're already installed. All right, so that's a quick way to install drivers, but if you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below. Anyways, now that our phone is in fastboot and detected, let's run the command to unlock the bootloader, and that is fastboot flashing unlock, like so, hit enter, and the screen on our device has actually changed and it asks us, do I want to unlock the bootloader? Of course we do. So we're gonna use the volume buttons to change the message up here, and then we're going to select to unlock the bootloader. Now give it a few seconds and it should also wipe your device while it's at it. And this will reboot our phone back into the bootloader. And we should see the device state as unlocked in red, as you can see here, which is good. So we've actually unlocked the bootloader and that is fantastic. So why don't we press start and from here we'll be able to boot back into Android and use Magisk Manager to patch our boot image that we extracted just then and patch Magisk into it. And that's how we're going to root our phone. So I'm going to fast forward this till we get back into Android. I'm going to have to breeze through the setup again. But at this point, if you don't plan on doing anything else, like flashing a custom ROM, you can actually go ahead and set up your device now. All right, so now that we're booted back into Android and I've just finished through the setup process, you need to connect your device to the internet. And once you've done that, we actually need to enable some of the settings again because our device was just wiped. So let's go back into the settings and enable the developer options once more. So I'm going to tap on the build number a few times enter in our pattern, go back, and then go to system, head over to developer options, and you can see that the bootloader is already unlocked, so this is by default enabled. I want you to also disable automatic system updates, that'll save us a few headaches later on, and we also want to enable USB debugging. Click OK, and that's good. So this allows us to use 
commands from our computer and our phone and to do certain tasks that just make it easier and uh, it makes it a bit more reliable when we're doing our next few steps. So that's pretty much done. So all we need to do is actually install Magisk Manager and also copy over the stock boot image that we extracted earlier. So why don't we head over to just our computer here just so I can show you what we need to download. And the thing we need to download is Magisk Manager, the Canary builds. Currently the beta build does work on Android 11, but there are some bugs there that prevent it from actually working properly on our lovely Pixel 3 here. And I assume a lot of other Pixel devices. So I'm going to be using the Canary builds only because they've actually got a lot of bugs that were fixed since the last time I tried to do this video. But in the future, for example, Magisk version 21.1 has come out and has actually fixed a lot of bugs. You can actually go ahead and download the regular version of Magisk Manager. And it's not like you can't go backwards or anything like that. It's very easy to downgrade or to change your update channel uh, back to something like the beta channel or the stable channel after trying out the Canary builds. So I recommend that you try out the Canary builds, but if you have any problems, you can always try the beta builds or even the stable build by that time. But right now, as of this video, and as of today, you need to use at least Magisk version 21 and above or the latest version of the Canary build. So uh, we need to head over to this same website on our phone. So I'm going to open up Chrome and I'm just going to go to the same website. So it's uh, well GitHub. Just go to the link that I have down below and just keep scrolling down until we can see Magisk Manager Canary. Tap on that button and then Chrome will ask you if you want to save that and we're going to open it. We need to allow Chrome to install applications. I'm going to install Magisk Manager. That's done. We can press done. And what we need to do also is copy the boot image to our phone. Why don't we use our computer for that since we've enabled USB debugging. Let's minimize this and let's type in ADB devices on our command prompt window. It should start up the ADB daemon and you also get a prompt on your device asking if you want to allow USB debugging from this computer. You always want to allow from this computer and then tap on allow. And once you've done that, if we type in ADB devices again, you should see that our device is connected properly and not unauthorized. All right, so let's copy this boot image onto our internal storage, which is also known as the SD card folder. So let's type in ADB push, drag in this boot image. Now, if you can't drag and drop like I just did here, you can hold shift and right click on the file that you need and then click on copy as path. Now, if you've done that, you can actually right click and paste the location. So I can right click and also do that. And that's if you can't drag and drop. And then the destination, we want to type in forward slash SD card forward slash and then hit enter. And this will copy the boot image to our device's internal storage. So now we can open up Magisk Manager that we just installed. And there we go. Uh, make sure that it is in the Canary update channel. So go to settings and then tap on update channel. Make sure you tap on Canary there as well. And now all you have to do is tap on install and then choose the option to select and patch a file. And then you'll need to go to your internal storage. So open up the hamburger menu, tap on the internal storage, and then tap on the boot image that we just copied over, and then tap on let's go. And this will download Magisk and it will also flash um, Magisk onto our boot image. So we'll patch everything ready to go. And we'll actually leave our boot image in the downloads folder on our device. And we'll use ADB to copy the patched boot image in this location back onto our computer. And from there, we'll be able to finalize rooting our device. So let's head over back to our computer here and we'll type in this command to copy over the patched Magisk image back to into our Android folder. So let's type in adb pull. So we need to type in the file that we want to pull, which is located in our download folder. So it's in forward slash SD card, forward slash, and then capital D download, another forward slash, and then type in Magisk underscore patched dot img. Leave a space after that, and we're going to put in two dots. Two dots represents the parent directory. Currently, we're in the platform tools directory, and the parent of that would be Android, which is, in fact, where everything else is. So if I were to hit enter right now, you can see that we have the magisk underscore patched image in our Android folder, and it was also a success. So that's a cool tip that you can remember now. And once we've done that, we need to pretty much reboot our phone into the bootloader, where we'll flash this patched image in replace of our boot partition, because after all, we did patch the boot image, the stock one. And after that, we should be rooted. So why don't we reboot our phone into the bootloader and we'll do the button method here. You can actually type in an ADB command, 
but sometimes I prefer doing the buttons here. So restart, hold volume down until we boot into the bootloader. So now we're in, we're going to use fastboot to flash the magisk underscore patched image onto our phone. So let's type in fastboot flash boot, leave a space after boot and drag in the magisk underscore patched image. Remember that you can also copy the image path as well if you can't drag and drop. And all you have to do here is hit enter. And there we go, we're rooted. So I want to re-reboot our phone back into Android by pressing start on the bootloader screen. And from here, our phone should boot up normally, hopefully. And we'll check out Magisk Manager and ensure that Magisk has been successfully installed. And then I'll go through some crucial steps that I believe you should take right after rooting your phone with Magisk, just to ensure that things like uh, certain banking apps or Pokemon Go, or Snapchat, Netflix, uh, should work on your device seamlessly, even though you're rooted. Uh, your mileage may vary, and in the future, this may become impossible as well. So as of today, it's possible, but unfortunately in the future, once uh, things catch up to Magisk, uh, it may not be possible to pass safety net. And I'll have more information down below as well. So we need to check out Magisk Manager, and hopefully it will say that we're rooted, and it should tell us that Magisk is installed. Alrighty, so there we are. The latest version is here, and we're, our installed version is also here which is really good news. So why don't we check out safety net right now and you can see what it looks like when we've just rooted our phone. We can see that we are not passing anything at all. And that is no worries because we need to enable Magisk Hide in the settings here. See this toggle? We need to enable that. And also, I recommend that you hide Magisk Manager because some apps actually detect Magisk Manager being installed and will behave differently when it is. So you can give it any name you like. You can tap on OK. You can see it'll download Magisk Manager and also hide it for you. The app should close by itself. The icon should disappear. And when we look at the app drawer, we'll see this new Manager app here with no icon. Well, that's fine. This is actually Magisk. And it'll ask to download the full version of Magisk Manager, which is pretty awesome. It loads it on the fly. And give that a few seconds. And once you open that up again and it asks you to relaunch the app, you can see that Magisk Manager is back online. And here, because you might not like that ugly icon, so you can always add a shortcut to the home screen. Tap on OK, and you can actually drag in a little Magisk Manager kind of icon on the screen, just for some familiarity. But as you can see, the package name is now this random short package name here. And when we check safety net again, look at that, and we're passing. Now one more note here, if your evaluation type here says hardware, I think, or key, unfortunately, it means that I don't think your CTS profile will ever pass unless you do a workaround that removes your device's identification. So when it does communicate with Google servers, when it does verify its safety net, it will report this device as some other device that does not support hardware-backed attestation. So if that's the case, for example, I believe the Pixel 4s, some of them actually do the hardware evaluation. Now, if you use a Magisk module that removes the device's identifying you know, name and model number, you can actually revert the evaluation type back to basic which will allow you to pass safety net. But again, that will probably be patched sooner or later, so that won't last for very long. But in the meantime, you can use that. But now, we're pretty much good to go. And any apps that you need to hide from Magisk or root access, you need to go into the super user section here, tap on Magisk Hide, and you'll need to check the apps that you want to hide Magisk from. So things like Google Pay, or I think Snapchat, or Pokemon Go, uh, you want to enable these here if you still want to use them normally. But there we go, we've rooted our Pixel device running Android 11 using the latest Canary builds of Magisk and safety net passes, which should mean that everything should run almost normally. So thanks for watching guys. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below. Even better yet, why don't you join us on Discord if you have any questions or if you just wanna chat about things Android, more than happy to do that as well. And as always, happy flashing.